Good morning, boys and girls. It's lovely to see you, and it's lovely to be back doing one of your assemblies for you. And um, I know you're wondering, you're wondering where Mac is. Well, Mac is here, but I've had to try and calm him down because he's very excited about the football at the moment, Euro 2020, even though it's 2021, it's still called Euro 20. And he's really excited. Oh, yeah, yeah. he's, he's going to come out here. Oh, yeah. oh, here he comes. I, I did say he was excited. Okay, 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 the boys, okay, 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 Mac, all right, just a second, the boys and girls here from the schools, yeah, I know you're excited, and I can see, oh, what you got, you got this scarf, what's this scarf on you for, you enjoy football, do you, wow, that's fantastic, I can see you could support it, but it's a bit strange, Mac, can I just actually see what scarf you've got on, let's have a look, look, let's have a look, you've got a, You've got a, a whale that says Cymru. That's really good. But wait a minute. You've, you've joined two scarves together. That one says... Yeah, that one says Scotland. Can you see that, boys and girls? Scotland. You enjoy both teams. That's really good. You enjoy football. That's really fantastic. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And it's always in good just to enjoy the games and what's going on. You, you like Gareth Bale, do you? And that's really good. Oh God. And you like that man called Gilmore? He plays for Scotland, that's right. Well, that's good. Well, but you know, it is really good, Mac, and it is really good, boys and girls, that we don't get too competitive. Competitive means that you just get so like your team that you hate all the other teams. That's not nice at all. I agree with you. It's good just to, it's good to enjoy football. Don't get nasty about other teams. That's right, is it? And that's right. And just enjoy the football. So we just want to see good football at Euro 20, didn't we, don't we? Yeah, it doesn't really matter who wins. You want Wales to win. I know you want Wales to win. But, well, I, tell, I thought I'd tell you a story that may fit with that. But you've got a little part to play in it as well, Mac, OK? And the boys and girls. Yeah, that's right. So the part you've got to play is every time I say the word groan, you groan, that's right, groan. That means grumble. That means you're in a bad mood, that's right. Every time I say the word groan, I want you to groan. Well, your groan sounds a bit like, yeah, it sounds a wee bit like that, that's right. So every time I say the word groaned, that's right, you can actually make that noise. So, can you do that, boys and girls? So when I say that someone groans, you go, ah. Uh. Can you do that for me? Groaned, ah. Uh. That's good, very good. Okay. It's a little practice. Groaned, ah. Uh. Very good, Mac. You're going to join in as well. You're going to listen? And we're going to find that it has got something to do with being competitive and being a little bit nasty as well. Because this person in the story is a bit nasty and he groans. Ugh. That's it. You ready? Here we go. Jonah was a groaner. That's right, a groaner. So when God told him to go to Nineveh and tell the people who live there to change their evil or bad ways, what did Jonah do? Jonah groaned. Not Nineveh, he groaned. Anywhere but Nineveh. The people who live there are our enemies. But when he had stopped groaning, Jonah bought himself a ticket. A ticket for a boat ride. A boat ride that would take him far away from Nineveh. God listened to Jonah groan. God watched him buy his ticket. But God still wanted Jonah to go to Nineveh. So when the boat reached the deepest part of the sea, God sent a storm. God help us, cried a sailor. We're sinking. God help us, cried another. We're tipping over. God must be very angry, cried the captain. Will someone here on board? And what did Jonah do? Jonah groaned. It's me, Jonah groaned. I'm the one God's angry with. He told me to go to Nineveh, and here am I sailing in the opposite direction. Throw me into the sea, and your troubles will be over. God forgive us, the sailors cried as they tossed Jonah into the water, and almost at once the sea grew calm. Oh dear, Jonah groaned. I'm sinking. Oh no, Jonah groaned. I'm going to drown. Oh my. Jonah groaned. That's the biggest fish I've ever seen. And before he could groan, another groan, the fish opened its mouth and swallowed Jonah up. 
it was God who sent the fish to rescue Jonah and to give him time to think. He had plenty to groan about. Of course, the fish's slimy stomach, the seaweed, the smell. But Jonah was still alive and that was something to cheer about. So Jonah stopped his groaning and prayed a prayer. I was sinking, Lord. I was drowning, but you saved me. So now I will do whatever you want. Three days later, the sh fish spat Jonah up on the beach and Jonah kept his promise. He went straight to Nineveh and told the people that God wanted them to change their bad and evil ways. 40 days is all you've got, he warned them. And if you haven't changed by then, God will destroy your city. The people of Nineveh listened. The people of Nineveh wept. Then the people of Nineveh changed. From the king right down to the poorest person, they decided to do what was right. And what did Jonah do? Jonah groaned. He sat himself down in the shadow of a tree and he groaned. I knew this would happen, he groaned. You're a loving God who loves to forgive and I still don't like the people of Nineveh and I wish they had been destroyed. Jonah fell asleep, groaning. And during the night, God sent a worm to kill the tree. When Jonah woke, he groaned more than ever. The tree is dead, he groaned, and now I have no shade. Oh, Jonah, God sighed. You cry about this tree, but you care nothing of the people of Nineveh. I want you to love them like I do. And finally, God added, I want you to stop your groaning. So what do you think of that story, Mac? You think Jonah was a little bit of a groaner? He was, wasn't he? Yeah, and I think he did learn a really important lesson. He did, didn't he, Mac? And boys and girls, did you get that? Yeah, that's right. He learned, well, I hope he learned, anyhow, to like and to love the people of Nineveh, just like God did. Yeah, that's right. I think it does help us when we think of football. It's okay to support our team like Wales or Scotland, in your case. Oh, you supported both of them. And England. Oh, that's good as well. But it's okay to support your team, your favourite team. But we mustn't get nasty, that's right. Because we remember, that's right, well, God loves them all. And we should. God should, tells us that we should love everyone. Not even our enemies. That's really hard, isn't it, man? Even people we don't like. Yeah, that's right. But God loves them and we're called to love them too. And yeah, we need to stop groaning as well. Do you think you've learned something today, Mac? You think God's a great lover. That's right, God loves everyone in the world. He loved the world so much that he gave, he sent his one and only son, Jesus. That's right, so that we could be friends again with God. Because Jesus died on the cross for us, that's right. And he came back to life again. And he's trying to teach us to love each other, that's right. But you whistle one way to win, okay. Or oh, Scotland, okay. You're hedging your bets a bit, yeah? Oh, England, yeah, okay. Okay, okay, Mac. okay, okay, okay. That's that. I think you've learned something though, haven't you? You've lo learned that God loves each one of us. And also not to grumble and grow. That's a good lesson as well. I hope you've learned that as well, boys and girls. And remember, enjoy your football or whatever sport you like. But let's not get let's not get nasty. That's right. Let's learn to care for each other as well, just like God cares for us. That's really good. Thank you, Mac. Thank you, boys and girls. See you again soon. Bye.